Britain, Bau, with its natural deep harbor, was born from a volcano. Many years ago, Rabau Caldera formed this huge crater. Standing on the edge of this ancient volcano, the view is now a ring of newer volcanoes surrounding Simpson Harbor. Rabau has been destroyed by volcanic action twice and rebuilt each time. In 1939, the earth quaked and a ball of fire ripped the air as two volcanoes erupted. The largest volcano, Vulcan, erupted first, followed by what volcanologists call a sympathetic eruption on nearby Tuvaru. There were minor tremors and quakes leading up to the eruption, but the people of Rabaul received little warning and there was no emergency evacuation. Wesley Toradoc was 12 years old at the time of the twin eruption. He was on Matapit Island when government officials arrived two hours before the eruption with warnings. Wesley moved with his family to a spot near the present airport. When we see it, and then we start fear. We, we saw something, you know, flammable, and rocks and all the, 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 uh, the cloud, but not cloud, the, uh, the broken edge. But they didn't blow uh, to Matupi Island. They blew towards Rapolo uh, uh, on the other side and to Rabao and Matupi Island on a little dust for the, about that thick. Uh, about 400 people buried. Yeah. It was that small village there, but no warning go there. Most of the 500 deaths resulting from the 1937 eruption were drowning casualties. When the reefs rose after seismic activity, local people streamed to the sea to catch the stranded fish. A tidal wave swept many people away. That was in 1937, and although there have been other volcano eruptions in Papua New Guinea since that time, despite tremors and seismic activity at Rabaul, there has been no major eruption. Volcanologists don't know which of the several volcanoes ringing Rabaul will be the next to erupt. It could be one of several, or there could be an entirely new volcano created. It was on October 29th of last year that volcanologists at the Rabaul Observatory looked at their charts and data and declared a Stage 2 alert. Stage 2 means that an eruption could happen within months to weeks. Officials told the local people that stage two meant an increased risk, but cautioned them that there was no cause for alarm. Stage three, called an orange alert, means it could be weeks to days before an eruption, and stage four, or red alert, announces only days or hours before any volcanic eruption. Volcanologists say the alert may never pass to stage three, instead jumping directly to stage four. We are pretty close to a stage three level of activity already. But so far, every time a high level of seismic activity and a high level of ground deformation, where the ground is rising up as a result of the magma pushing from underneath, every time it happens, it calms down again after a couple of days. We had a major crisis, seismic crisis, how it's called, during the Easter weekend, Saturday and Sunday, which was of a level, if it would have continued, would have brought us straight into stage three or maybe even into stage four. The provincial government of New Britain and the government of Papua New Guinea have a big responsibility for keeping track of seismic activity and issuing warnings. When stage two was declared, there was no official announcement at first for fear of causing panic among the 45,000 residents of the region around Rabau. But in true island grapevine fashion, word soon leaked out and early this year, the government began announcing evacuation plans and issuing evacuation maps. People living in what is called the Purple Zone are in the area of greatest risk. That area covers about one-third of the town of Rabaul and includes those people living nearest the three volcanoes on the eastern side of Rabaul's harbor. Covering a wide area around the harbor, the red zone spells danger in the event of a volcanic eruption. Thousands of Rabaul residents from the red and purple zones have already moved house to safer land.
The provincial government has provided land for relocated villages, and they call those settlements pre-evacuation centers. When we declare state two, because our plan is self-reliance, and this should not depend on the government so much, a lot of the local people, basically Tolais, move themselves out at state two. They build themselves houses, they move into land, they make gardens, and they're happy where they are. There are some uh, social problems like water and so on. We are getting on top of that. Uh, roads, free the road to these evacuation centers. We are upgrading those roads to the evacuation centers. The huts at this pre-evacuation center may look a bit rough, but villagers call their new homes very livable. Most are willing to put up with inconveniences to live in safety. If you still lack the, uh, some other facilities, like toilet, um, what, water for washing and consumption. When stage four is announced, government vehicles will pick up villagers from transit centers in the red zone and take them to special evacuation centers. When needed, this area here in Bitter Parker will be used to house families evacuated from the danger zone. This old TB hospital has been renovated, the water supply rebuilt, and now it's just a matter of waiting. While the waiting game goes on, the people of Rabaul and nearby villages keep an eye on the stages and information on seismic activity. We have uh, a program over the radio where we broadcast situation report. Uh, we also, as a, a, as a paper called the public, uh, uh, the information bulletin that uh, tells the public in English in Pidgin and in Kualua, the local vernacular here about the crisis situation here. Here is today's situation report from the Rabal Observatory. The Rabal Volcanological Observatory today reported that seismic activity from the Rabal volcano had returned to a low level following the short-term increase last Monday. A there is a regular program for uh, uh, the volcanic situation. is on the radio all the time, I think three times a day. While people keep their ears open to the volcano reports, many of the residents and businesses of Rabaul are not waiting for a change in volcanic activity. In fact, the city known as Rabaul may be dying. Businesses are relocating. A new wharf at Cabacol is under construction, and Rabaul Airport is even being moved. Built under the shadow of two of Rabaul's volcanoes, the old airport will soon be abandoned. Land for a new airport is being cleared in the dense tropical jungle near Takawa Plantation. The new airport, in a seismically safe area, is scheduled for completion late this year. All the plans for relocation, evacuation, and transportation are being handled by the Provincial Disaster Control Committee. The committee, admittedly, has a big job. After stage two was declared, there was much preparation work to be done. The four government volcanologists at the Rabaul Observatory had their hands full monitoring and analyzing data. Still, volcanologists continue to gather data while the Disaster Control Committee puts out alerts by radio, pamphlets, and newspapers. But even with all the latest sophisticated electronic and computerized scientific instruments, no one really knows when or where the next volcano will explode in Rabaul. We are dealing with natural phenomena. If you want to have an example in common everyday life, look at the weather report. The one thing which they have in common is that they are natural phenomena which are only incompletely understood at present. And uh, there are so many random variables involved in those processes that very often the scientists have to reduce, uh, have to resort to statistical techniques to get any sense into them. And of course, as we all know, statistics is uh, uh, not always a very accurate tool of prediction.